Okay, uh, yesterday we were learning about the concept of a minion. What can you count a minion? We discussed about Tinnik Shenishba. Okay, so we said a boy has to become bar mitzvah as soon as the 13th birthday comes because the 13th year was finished right before the birthday and then as soon as the birthday comes, it's part of the day, it's like a day. So therefore he becomes bar mitzvah. But you can have a scenario that somebody is born after somebody, but they become bar mitzvah before them. They're born after, but they become bar mitzvah before. What's the case? If two kids are born in a leap year, two others. One is born the 20th of the first other. 20th of the first other. The second one is born the 10th of the second other. So he's born tw- 20 days later. Right? This kid is born the 20th of the first Adar, and this kid is born the 10th of the second Adar. So uh, 20 days older. The year they become Bar Mitzvah, it's not a leap year. Okay? So this one becomes Bar Mitzvah on the 10th of Adar. The second one becomes Bar Mitzvah on the 20th of Adar. So even though he was born 20 days later, or 20 days earlier, he becomes a bar mitzvah 10 days later. Okay, so something could work out that way. So now the din is as follows. If somebody is born in a regular year, they're born in a regular, not a leap year, and the year they become bar mitzvah is a leap year. So when do they become bar mitzvah? Allah is in the second Adar. Not in the first Adar, in the second Adar. If somebody was born in a leap year on the first Adar, and then the year of the Bar Mitzvah is also a leap year, then his birthday is the first Adar. But if you're born in a regular year, when do you become Bar Mitzvah, or Bas Mitzvah for that matter? You become Bar and Bas Mitzvah at the second Adar. That's when you celebrate your birthday, and that's uh, when it is. Is it the same if somebody is a whole different story. We'll get, when you get to Yartzeh, it's different because... Then it's a machlekes, which order do you keep? The basic halach is you keep the first adar, but you also keep the second adar. But the ma- first adar is the main, the main adar. I personally have that with my father. He passed away gimel adar in a regular year. So like this year is a leap year, so I keep both yard sites. But the primary one is the first adar. What if they passed away on the leap year on the second? No, so then... If it, when the leap year comes, it's the second Adar. Yeah. And the, one, the regular one? And the first, there's only one Adar. That's it. Huh? Okay, that's a different story with the birthday. Islam al we'll get to not now. I know, I'm saying we'll get there. That's a whole different complication story. Okay, next is like this. When you count heads for a minion, see if you have a minion, you're not allowed to go one, two, three, four, five. Because then, it's uh, not a. It, it could be a curse. Because you don't. So some people use psukim. Okay, some people use heshia samech overchas nachlasach orem venasi mada elam is ten words. Some people use the pasuk v'ita nochol lekim mitala shemay mishmani artis v'reiv dogim v'sidish. Some people use the bracha baruch atah Hashem alkenu malochelam ametzi lechem and artis. All these <laughs> phrases have ten words in them. So you count, but Hashia S and Mach, you don't even point for Chlal. Huh? Yeah, but then how are you gonna know if it's one, two, or three if you have a minion? You do it in the fingers. So then you can look at them and go like this. You don't have to. You don't. Uh, you're not allowed to count. You're not allowed to count Jews with numbers, um, even for a mitzvah. So Kitzi brings down. You use Hashia S and That's the accepted custom. Now, when you have a minion. You can't have a minion all over the place. They have to be in the same room. A minion has to be in the same room. If you have part of the people in the room, part of the people outside of the room, in a way that if you close the door, they're separated, then you can't count them for a minion. They have to be, therefore you need everybody in the room, not some people on the porch and some people in the kitchen and some people wherever it is. It should be... In the, in the same area that if you would close the door it would be a problem but there's no door then, uh, then it would be counted but 
I'm saying a doorway, if there's no door that you can lock them out, so to speak. But uh, then it's no good even if the door is open. But if, let's say you have a minion in the show, and some people are in the kitchen or outside, they could answer, I mean, there's no question, because you have a minion in the room itself. By the way, it's an interesting post can bring down. What happens if you have a mechitza, closes the shul, or a men's shul and a woman's shul? And then you have some of the minion in the men's shul, and some of the minion in the lady's shul. Like here, you would have the, the mechitza closed, let's say, and then you'd have some guys there and some guys there. Can you count it as a minion or is it considered a separate room? So Allah says a mechitza between men and women is not considered a wall. It's not considered a wall, and therefore it's all considered the same room. Therefore you're allowed to put up a mechitza on Shabbos. You're not creating a wall, because a mechitza that says, the mechitza that separates men and women is not actually considered a wall. It's just a separation, but it's not actually creating a different room, so then there's no problem. Okay, next. Um, if, um, okay, not only that, another interesting Shaila. You have a room with a minion, okay? And then you have a room, guy <laughs> half a block down. And he hears the minion, the chazan has a loud voice. So he hears the chazan saying, uh, Kedusha, Kaddish, Baruch Hu, you know, whatever. He's allowed to answer. If he hears, even though he's not in the room, he's a few doors down, whatever. But he hears the Kedusha Baruch, he's allowed to answer. So now the question is like this. This came up, it's not so common nowadays, but by Chabad it was a very big issue at one time. When the Rebbe would daven in 770, Let's say he would be, he had yard site. So he'd have it for the Yomit, let's say, Yud Shvat or Chafov or Vav Tishri, whatever it is. And we're here, and you hear a hookup, a phone hookup to the Rebbe's davening, right? Are you allowed to answer, Amen, Kaddish, Kedusha, Barchu? Are you allowed to answer? Because we hear him davening, but he's like three and a half, two and a half thousand, whatever, three thousand miles away. Are you allowed to answer here? So the din is like this. You're not Yaitza Kriya Satayra. Now, if you hear the Torah reading over there, you're not Yaitza because it's again through a telephone. So you're not Yaitza the Kriya Satayra. You're not Yaitza Chazar Sachatz. But you would be allowed to answer Amen Kaddish Kedusha Baruch You would be allowed to answer Amen even though it's 3,000 miles away. And the proof of that is that Alpidin, you don't necessarily need to hear the actual Chazan's voice. The Gemara says there's a Beis of Alexandria, in Alexandria, Egypt, where a lot of Jews ended up. There's a massive, massive show. And they couldn't hear the Chazan. Not because they were talking, it was just a very, very big show. They couldn't hear the Chazan. So the Gemara says what they had was there were guys in the middle of the show with flags. Not yellow flags. They had guys in the middle of the show with flags. There was an Amen flag, a Baruchu flag, Amen Yishmir Abba flag. When the guy in the middle of the show heard the Chazan and they had to answer Amen, he would pick up the Amen flag and everybody in the back of the show answered Amen. If it was Kedusha, he picked up the Kedusha flag and everybody knew to say Kedusha. Even though they didn't hear the chazan, even though they didn't hear the chazan, that then shows halachically that even if you don't hear the chazan, but you know exactly when the chazan is saying it, you can answer amen in kedusha and baruchu. So the same if you have a phone hookup, and the phone hookup you hear the way they're answering, making a, a saying a bracha. Even though you didn't hear it because you only heard it through the phone, and halachically we learned that's not called hearing it from directly from the person. Nevertheless, you can answer Amen and Kedusha and Baruchu and all that. But again, you're not yet to Kriya Satayra. You still need to hear Kriya Satayra by yourself because you can't hear Kriya Satayra through a telephone. But as far as answering, a person would be allowed to do it. Next thing is, a person needs to be extremely careful in answering Kaddish. Amen, Yehesh Abba. The Gemara says like this. 
Whoever answers Amen Yehesh Rabba with all his might is even if there was a decree uh, of evil for 70 years, they rip it up. They rip it up. But the Mephashim explained, B'chol Kayche doesn't mean yelling it, screaming it. It means all your kavana. That means you, not screaming, but inside you have the proper kavana for Amen Yehish Rabba. By the way, just to make everybody feel good, there's another Gemara that says that whoever is Menabal Piv, whoever speaks not nicely, it says even if there was a decree, Gemara says in Ksubis, that even if there was a decree of 70 years of good sealed in heaven, it's ripped up and it's changed to 70 years of bad. <laughs> so you better answer a lot of Amin Yehishmer Abbas <laughs> if you're not careful the way you speak. But you need to answer Amin properly and he says it breaks all the evil things, but you shouldn't scream it that people shouldn't make fun of you and laugh at you and cause sin and so on and so forth. Next is like this. There's a machlekes in halacha. When the chazan says Kaddish, when people say Kaddish, do you have to stand or not? Do you have to, do you have to stand? So halacha says, yeah, it's preferred to stand, but not necessarily. Halacha says the following is the halacha. If it's a Kaddish, like, I'll give an example, after Yishtabach, you're standing, and then the chazan says, have Kaddish in the Mbarchu. So because you're already standing, you're not allowed to sit for that Kaddish. You're not allowed to sit for that Kaddish. But if you're sitting in davening, and somebody comes in, or somebody says Kaddish, like after the Yom, you're sitting by the Yom, and somebody comes along and says Kaddish, so it says, I'll be then you don't have to get up. Amen Yeshmer it says you should pick yourself up a little bit. But Al Pidin, you don't have to stand up if you're a Kaddish where you're already sitting. Halachically, you don't, it's bad, it's preferred, it says in Halacha. But halachically, you don't have to stand for that Kaddish because you're already sitting. And where do we learn this out from Bechlau? It's an interesting story in Tanakh and Shaftim. There was a king of Mayav by the name of Eglin. He was a very, very fat king. He was the poster boy for fat people. And Ehud was one of the Nevi'im, the one of the Shaftim. Ehud, Hashem told him to kill Eglin. Okay, so there's a whole story in Tanakh, it's late, but Ehud was paralyzed in his right hand. Ehud couldn't use his right hand. So when he went into security to visit the king, they would always check if you had a, a sword here. Because if you're right-handed, that's where your sword would be. But he was left-handed. So he had a sword on this side. So when he went into the king, they didn't check him. Because his, the security was only on that side. He comes into the king, Eglin, and he says, I have a message from you from Hashem. He said, I have a message for you from Hashem. When Eglin heard that, he stood up out of respect to Hashem. And then Ayo took the sword and stabbed it into his stomach. The, the, the apostles that didn't even go all the way through his stomach, that's how fat he was. And he killed him. So it says, the, the, the Madrid says, that in the merit that Eglain Melech Moyev, a goy, who was the king of Moyev, stood when he heard a message from Hashem, he merited that Rus was a granddaughter of Eglain. Melech Meyev, who was the forebearer of Dovna Melech Mashiach and all that. Why did he merit that Rus came from Meyev? Rus was Meyevia? Because he stood up when he was told a message from Hashem. So from there you see that when you say Kaddish, Kaddush, Shabarchu, you have to have the proper respect.